Hi. Barbara Streisand is an American singer, actress, director, and philanthropist, winner of all the most prestigious music and film awards. Not so boring. Uh, you'd be surprised how boring it isn't. <laughs> Watch our new video to find out how a girl from a simple Jewish family achieved stunning fame and became one of the most successful performers in the history of show business. Dre, gosh, they'll look at me. The whole world will look at me and be stunned. Oh. Barbara Streisand, how the showbiz star lives, and what she spends her millions on. One place in the theater I've never sat. Maybe things look different from here. Barbara Joan Streisand was born on April 24, 1942 in Brooklyn, New York, into a Jewish family of a school secretary, Diana, who in her youth dreamed of a musical career, and Emmanuel Streisand who worked at the same school as a teacher. Her father's parents were immigrants from Galicia, and her mother's ancestors came from the Russian Empire. Streisand also has an older brother, Sheldon, who was born in 1934. A year after Barbara was born, her father passed away, and the family ended up in near poverty. In 1950, Diana married for the second time, and in this marriage, a year later, Streisand's sister, Rosalind Kind, was born, who also connected her life with music. However, Barbara's relationship with her stepfather did not work out as he often raised his hand against her. At the age of five, Streisand began her studies in a Jewish Orthodox school, and after some time, she transferred to a public school in Brooklyn, and in the same period, after watching TV shows and movies, she decided she wanted to become famous. By the way, classmates disliked Barbara and bullied her because of her unconventional appearance. The girl began practicing her vocal skills in the hallways of her apartment building, and her debut performance was at a parent-teacher conference. Barbara's talent fascinated everyone present except her own mother, who constantly criticized her daughter and did not believe in her success. People started inviting Streisand to sing at weddings and summer camps, and at the age of nine, she went to audition for the MGM Records label, which, however, ended in failure. But at the age of 13, she had already released her first demo recordings of four covers of well-known songs. In addition to music, Barbara developed another passion, acting. At the age of 14, she saw the Broadway production of The Diary of Anne Frank, starring Susan Strasberg, and began spending all her free time in the library, studying biographies of theater actresses, famous plays, and acting theory. In 1956, Streisand entered Erasmus Hall High School where, despite frequent absences, had excellent marks in history, English, and Spanish. She also began singing in the school choir with her classmates Neil Diamond and regularly checked out new releases at the nearest movie theater. Also, during that period, she had a crush on Robert Fisher, who was already the U.S. chess champion at that time. In 1959, Streisand graduated from high school, and despite her mother's urging to leave her dreams of show business, she left home. She agreed to any work related to the theater and, in her spare time, attended all sorts of castings, while living with her friends and barely making ends meet. During the same period, Barbara befriended Barry Denon, who helped her get a job as a singer at a club. In 1960, Streisand shortened her name to Barbara to make it more memorable. At the same time, the girl was often advised to do a nose job, but she decided to keep her distinct feature. In 1961, the performer began singing in the upscale nightclub Blue Angel, and the following year debuted on Broadway in a small but notable role in the musical I'll Get You That Wholesale. Her partner was Elliot Gould, with whom she immediately developed a romantic relationship. The production received enthusiastic reviews, and Streisand was honored with a Tony Award nomination. Meanwhile, she appeared more and more often in popular TV shows, for example, in 1962, she appeared on The Gary Moore Show to perform for the first time the famous Happy Days Are Here Again, which became her calling card early in her career. In early 1963, Streisand signed a contract with Columbia Records, which gave her freedom to choose her own material for the album in exchange for lower royalties. The debut record, titled The Barbara Streisand Album, reached the top 10 on the Billboard 200 chart and won two Grammy Awards. 
and Barbara became the best-selling female singer in the United States. In August 1963, her second album, the second Barbra Streisand album, was released, which consolidated the singer's overwhelming success and sold more than a million copies worldwide. In September, Barbara and Elliot Gould got married in Carson City, Nevada. Streisand, whose popularity was growing at an incredible rate, claimed that marriage gave her a sense of stability. In February 1964, Barbara released the third album, which was also a success and then returned to Broadway, where she played the role of a pop singer Fanny Bryce in the biographical musical Funny Girl. The play received favorable reviews, which led to Barbara appearing on the cover of Time magazine and then being nominated again for a Tony. September saw the release of her fourth studio album, People, which topped the Billboard 200 chart, went platinum, and earned her a Grammy. In April 1965, a special My Name is Barbara, dedicated to the singer, premiered on CBS. The TV concert was a huge success, winning five Emmys, a Director's Guild Award, and a Golden Globe nomination, and Streisand was honored with a Peabody Award for her outstanding contribution to radio and television. The studio albums My Name is Barbara and My Name is Barbara 2 were recorded that same year and released in support of the show. they received universal critical and public acclaim, bringing Streisand a Grammy and making her the best-selling female vocalist of the year. March 1966 saw the release of Streisand's seventh album, titled Color Me Barbara, which was timed to coincide with the premiere of the first color television play on CBS. The record reached number three on the Billboard 200 and was nominated for two Grammys. The singer then repeated the funny girl success in London's West End, and in October, she presented the album Je m'appelle Barbara, where most of the songs were sung in French. In December 1966, Barbara gave birth to her first and only son, Jason Gould, who later became an actor and musician. In October 1967, the singer's ninth album, Simply Streisand, was released, which, however, was considered mediocre by critics compared to her previous works. At the same time, Barbara's first Christmas record, a Christmas album, was released, which was a great success and showed excellent sales. Christmas present is here today. Meanwhile, during one of her performances in front of an audience of thousands, the singer forgot the lyrics to several songs, and from that moment, she stopped giving live concerts until the 90s. In 1968, Streisand made her big movie debut, starring in William Wyler's biographical musical drama, Funny Girl, based on the popular musical. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, it's all right. I'm one of the eight beautiful girls' eight. Well, the makeup helps a lot. Really. The film received universal critical acclaim, becoming the highest grossing film of the year and brought Barbara an Oscar, a Golden Globe, and a nomination for the British Academy Award, as well as a $200,000 fee. By the way, Frank Sinatra wanted to play the main male role, performed by Omar Sharif, with whom the actress also had a short affair. But Barbara demanded to reject his candidacy because of personal animosity. In the same 1968, Barbara, Marlene Dietrich, and Judy Garland presented a black glamour fur coat made of high-end black mink fur. In early 1969, Streisand and Gould announced their separation, officially terminating the marriage only in July 1971. Barbara soon began dating Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau. Their relationship lasted until 1971. In July 1969, Streisand's 11th studio album, What About Today?, was released, featuring her covering pop songs, including works by The Beatles and Paul Simon. Later that year, the musical romantic comedy Hello, Dolly! premiered, where Barbara's co-star was Walter Matthau. For her role in the film, the actress earned $750,000 and was nominated for a Golden Globe. This trip a pleasure trip, Mrs. Levi. Mr. Jones, with me, business is always a pleasure. And you've got more businesses than a dog has fleas. Well, as my late husband Ephraim Levi used to say, if you have to live from hand to mouth, you better be ambidextrous. Interestingly enough, the relationship between Matho and Streisand was so complicated that the film crew had to work very hard to convincingly shoot a scene of kissing, hiding the fact that the lips of the conflicting actors did not touch. In 1970, 
Streisand appeared on movie screens in the musical comedy drama Fantasy on a clear day you can see forever, the fee for which amounted to $350,000, and in the romantic comedy The Owl and the Pussycat earning one million and a Golden Globe nomination. Both movies enjoyed moderate commercial success. In addition, Barbara was awarded an Honorary Star of the Decade Tony Award. In 1971, Barbara released the albums Stony End and Barbara Jones Streisand, in which she kept working with a more modern repertoire. In 1972, Streisand, along with Ryan O'Neill, with whom she had a brief romantic relationship, starred in the eccentric comedy What's Up, Doc? Say is how much he appreciates your wonderful hospitality and how many times we'll both think of you when we're back in good old Iowa. About compelling <laughs> sentiments. Did anyone ever tell you that you were very, very sexy? How well, actually, no. They never will. It was praised by critics and viewers, becoming one of the highest grossing films of the year and hit the list of the greatest American comedies. It also brought the actress a fee of $500,000. By the way, the scene on the unfinished building was filmed not in a pavilion, but on the real roof of the Hilton Hotel, and Barbara sang live. In December 1972, the comedy drama Sandbox was released. It addressed the topics of feminism and sexual revolution, but despite favorable reviews from critics, the film failed at the box office. In 1973, Barbara starred in the romantic drama The Way We Were, which performed well at the box office and became one of the best films of the year, according to critics. The role in the movie brought Barbara nominations for Oscar, Golden Globe, and BAFTA. That's what's different. Yeah. I have it ironed. You have your hair ironed? Mm-hmm. Does it hurt? No. In addition, the title track, The Way We Were, received an Oscar, a Golden Globe, and a Grammy Award. The way we were. At the end of the year, the singer's next studio album, Barbara Streisand and Other Musical Instruments, was released, which became the soundtrack of her TV special of the same name. Besides, in 1973, she began dating producer John Peters, who later became her manager. In January 1974, Streisand released her 15th LP titled The Way We Were, which managed to reach the top of the Billboard 200 and go double platinum. Then the comedy, For Pete's Sake, was released on the screens, which didn't have a significant success either with critics or with the audience. Streisand's 16th album, Butterfly, which includes a cover of songs by various artists including Bob Marley and David Bowie, was released in October. In 1975, Barbara returned to the role of Fanny Bryce for the sequel to Funny Girl called Funny Lady. Childbirth, was that easy? Easy was like pushing a piano through a transom. We gotta push this one through. You're gonna push this one, Buster. 8 a.m., I call my lawyers. Get out. Critics negatively rated the sequel, but despite this, the movie was a box office success and brought Barbara a Golden Globe nomination. By the way, Streisand was again dissatisfied with her co-star as she saw Robert Blake, not James Caan, in the role of Billy. However, Blake was angry that he was not immediately approved and invited to audition instead, so he refused to star. In the end, Barbara had to come to terms with Caan getting the role. During the filming of the scene where Fanny is flying on an airplane, Streisand had to spend an extra half hour in the air because of complications in the control room. This infuriated the actress, who was afraid of flights as it was. At the end of 1975, she released the album Lazy Afternoon, which included both cover versions and original pop songs, and in early 1976, she released the record Classical Barbara which consisted of songs by classical European composers in different languages, recorded with a symphony orchestra. Both works were positively received by critics and listeners alike. In December 1976, the musical romantic drama A Star Is Born premiered, where Streisand worked with Chris Christopherson with whom she also had a brief fling. Critics were not impressed by the movie, which, however, did not prevent it from achieving outstanding results at the box office, as well as bringing Barbara a Golden Globe and a substantial fee of $15 million. Besides the song Evergreen, which was included in the soundtrack with Streisand as a composer, was a great success. 
It won an Oscar, a Golden Globe, and a Grammy. By the way, while working on the film, the actress insisted that the performance of the composition was filmed live, and the movie's soundtrack became one of Streisand's best-selling albums, achieving quadruple platinum status. Curiously enough, Barbara criticized the 2018 remake directed by Bradley Cooper starring Lady Gaga for its lack of innovation, saying it was too similar to the version starring her. Between 1977 and 1979, she released the albums Superman, Songbird, and Wet. They were moderately successful with critics but showed excellent sales. Also in 1979, the sports romantic comedy The Main Event was released. It was well received by the audience and the song The Main Event and Fight, which was included in the soundtrack, was nominated for a Golden Globe. Barbara's fee for working on the movie was $1 million. 1980 saw the release of Streisand's next studio album, Guilty, written by Barry Gibb from the Bee Gees. It received glowing reviews, and it still remains the best-selling record in the singer's career, going five times platinum. And the single, Woman in Love, which topped the Billboard chart for three weeks and was nominated for a Grammy, is still one of her best-known songs. However, Barbara later admitted that she doesn't like the song, which is the reason why she rarely performs it live. By the way, another single, the duet with Gibb called Guilty, also won a Grammy. In 1981, Barbara appeared in the failed comedy All Night Long, which brought her a fee of $4 million. But for the role in it, the actress was nominated for the Golden Raspberry for the first time. In 1983, the romantic musical drama Yentl premiered, where Streisand not only played the lead role, but also acted as a director, producer, and co-writer of the script. You're in the wrong place, miss. What? Books for women are over here. Novels, very romantic. I'd like to buy this one, please. Sacred books are for men. Why? It's a law, that's why. Where is it written? Never mind where, it's a law. The film about a Jewish girl pretending to be a man was recognized as one of the best pictures of the year and performed well at the box office, and Barbara became the first woman to win a Golden Globe for directing. However, another Golden Globe nomination for Best Actress didn't stop her from simultaneously qualifying for the Golden Raspberry as well. Her fee for working on the film was $3 million. Interestingly enough, Streisand read the story on which the film is based back in 1968 and was able to buy the rights to the screen version only 10 years later, after which she immediately started working. During the filming of the movie, Barbara also broke up with John Peters, after which she was involved in a series of flings with Michael Cimino and Richard Gere, and then she began dating film composer and producer Richard Baskin. In 1984, Barbara returned to the world of music with her 23rd studio album, Emotion, and a year later she released the Broadway album, which topped the Billboard 200 and won her a Grammy. In 1987, the drama Nuts was released. It didn't impress critics and viewers, but for this role, Streisand was nominated for a Golden Globe and earned $5.5 million. In 1988, Barbara released the album Till I Loved You, and after breaking up with Baskin, she began a relationship with actor Don Johnson, which ended nine months later. She briefly dated Clint Eastwood in 1989, and then was in a relationship with film composer James Newton Howard until 1991. From 1992 to 1993, Streisand had a romantic relationship with tennis champion Andre Agassi, who was 28 years younger than her. She also had brief flings with actors Liam Neeson, John Voight, and Peter Weller. And from 1994 to 1998, she dated TV host Peter Jennings. In the 90s, Barbara twice returned to directing and producing. In 1991, she worked on the successful romantic drama The Prince of Tides, which brought her Oscar and Golden Globe nominations, as well as a fee of $6.5 million. What do you think of me, Tom? I think you're a very sad woman. I like it when you tell the truth. And I think you're the first friend I've made in a long time. While preparing for the role, the actress had been consulting with psychiatrists for about six months. Incidentally, it was Don Johnson who advised Streisand to read the novel on which the movie is based. At first, she wanted to cast the actor as Tom, but by the time filming began, they had broken up and Don's place was taken by Nick Nolte. 
In 1996, Streisand released the romantic comedy drama The Mirror Has Two Faces, mainly notable for the song I Finally Found Someone, which earned her Oscar and Golden Globe nominations. Barbara was also nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Actress and earned a record $20 million, which was later supplemented by a percentage of the earnings. In the meantime, Streisand's three studio albums were released. In 1993, the hit record, Back to Broadway, soared to the top of the Billboard 200 and earned her two Grammy nominations. In 1997, Barbara released the equally successful album, Higher Ground, which went triple platinum and was nominated twice for a Grammy, including for the lead single, Tell Him. It was recorded as a duet with Celine Dion and became an international hit. A Love Like Ours, released in 1999, did not repeat the success of the previous two albums, but still managed to achieve platinum status. Also in that period, Barbara overcame her stage fright and performed two concert tours, Barbara Streisand in Concert in 1993-1994 and Timeless in 1999-2000, which raised $50 million and $70 million, respectively. In 1998, after breaking up with Jennings, Streisand married for the second time. Her partner was actor James Brolin, and they are still happily together. In 2001, Barbara's second Christmas album, Christmas Memories, was released. And in 2003, she produced a concept record, The Movie Album, which included songs from her favorite movies. Both works were well-received by the public and got nominated for Grammys. In 2004, Streisand returned to cinema, starring in the romantic comedy Meet the Fockers. And now, madam, let's find something sexy for the mama to wear. Look at this little number. Whoa. I think this will get Jack's blood flowing. Oh, oh, Jack would have a coronary. I thought so. However, she received a Golden Raspberry nomination for it. Funnily enough, while working with Barbara on the film, Terry Polo, who played Pam, accidentally called her Boob, and this nickname firmly stuck to the actress on the set. In 2005, the singer teamed up with Barry Gibb again and released the record Guilty Pleasures. And in 2009, she recorded the album Love is the Answer, which reached the top of the Billboard 200. Barbara also had a successful tour in 2006 to 2007 called Streisand, which grossed about $120 million. In 2010, she appeared in the movie Little Fockers, for which she received $7 million. And in 2013, she starred in the road comedy The Guilt Trip. What a nice chapter. He's a beautiful writer. Whoa! <laughs> it's okay. I picked up a hitchhiker. By the way, Paramount Studios was so confident that Barbara would receive a Golden Globe nomination for her role in the latter that they released the news about it before the nominees were revealed. The announcement had to be immediately removed as the actress was not among them. Moreover, this movie, as well as the preceding one, brought Streisand nomination for the Golden Raspberry and became the last work in her film career at the moment. By the way, Barbara is not planning to return to the big screens in the near future. However, Streisand never quit music, and in the 2010s, she presented four releases. In 2011, the album What Matters Most was released, which was well-received by critics but wasn't successful with the public. The record Partners, released in 2014, produced the opposite results. It was nominated for a Grammy and allowed Barbara to become the only performer whose albums have been number one on the Billboard 200 in every decade since the 60s. Why am I blue? The singer's next album, Encore Movie Partners Sing Broadway, released in 2016, also soared to the top of the charts and received a Grammy nomination. But 2018's Walls, despite critical acclaim and a Grammy nomination, failed to make the Billboard 200 Top 10 and showed low sales. There was also the Barbara Live Tour in 2012 to 2013 and the Barbara The Music The Memories The Magic Tour in 2016 to 2017. The shows grossed $66 million and $53 million, respectively. In November 2023, Streisand released her 970-page autobiography, My Name is Barbara, along with a 48-plus-hour audiobook read by the author. Barbara's memoir became a bestseller and was considered one of the best books of the year. 
Streisand will also be honored with the SAG Life Achievement Award at the ceremony, which will be held in February 2024. Obviously, during such a long and successful career, Barbara has amassed quite a fortune, which is currently estimated at around $400 million. Streisand owns a huge clifftop compound in Malibu worth more than $100 million. In 1997, she purchased three picturesque plots of more than 10 acres of oceanfront land, which include a main house of about 10,700 square feet and two guest houses of 2,100 and 5,900 square feet. One of them features an incredible collection of antique furniture and Art Deco works of art. In 2010, Barbara published a book, My Passion for Design, in which she described working on the interior and exterior of her fabulous estate. Streisand also owned an estate in Beverly Hills, which was put up for sale in 2016 for $150 million. Also, for over 30 years, the singer lived in a cozy Manhattan penthouse of about 6,400 square feet with an amazing view of Central Park. She rented it out to other celebrities for a while and sold it for $4.25 million in 2002. Its value in 2019 was reported to be $11.25 million. During the filming of The Mirror Has Two Faces, Streisand, like her character, lived in a magnificent apartment in a 14-story building on the Upper West Side. In 2021, this apartment was listed for sale for $2.8 million. Apart from luxury real estate, Barbara's property also includes gorgeous cars. At various times, she has owned a 1959 Bentley S1 sedan as well as convertibles such as a 1964 Mercedes-Benz 450 SL, a 1964 Porsche 911 Targa 4S, a Ferrari 458 Spider, and a vintage 1926 Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost. Throughout her career, Barbara has been an avid philanthropist. For example, in 1973, she supported the National Association for Cognitively Impaired Children and, in 1984, she donated a research building to the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. In 1986, the singer founded the Streisand Foundation, which in the following years provided more than $16 million in grants to various organizations working on environmental conservation, civil rights, women's issues, and nuclear disarmament. She also raised $22 million for the Barbara Streisand Women's Heart Center in 2012. In 2022, Barbara spoke out against Russian invasion of Ukraine and, in September, accepted Volodymyr Zelensky's personal proposal to become an ambassador of the United 24 platform, focusing on medical assistance to Ukrainians and having already raised more than $240,000. Streisand was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1976, the U.S. National Medal of Arts in 2000, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2015. Barbara is a huge dog lover. She lives with three beloved Coton de Tullier dogs, two of which are clones of her pet Samantha, which passed away in 2017. The procedure of cloning cost the woman $100,000. Interestingly enough, there's a social phenomenon named after Barbara called the Streisand Effect, which is the rise in popularity of censored information. In 2003, she sued a photographer who accidentally took pictures of her home because she believed it would encourage stalkers. However, the photo went viral after word of the lawsuit spread. In 2010, the duo Duck Sauce released the single Barbara Streisand based on the song Gotta Go Home by Boney M, which became a big dance hit. Barbara Do you like Barbara Streisand better as a singer or actress? If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.